Uh, resampling for evaluation performance. Uh, we're going to look at why we do it. And it, through that, we're going to look at bias between different models. Uh, and then the next chapter covers, or next section covers a bunch of different techniques, uh, namely cross-validation and bootstrap. Um, and then we're going to look at how tidy models uh, implemented this. And we're going to look at main functions like fit resamples and collect metrics and predictions. So yeah, this is why we would use uh, resampling. You don't want to touch the test set until the very end, but you want some kind of a gauge into how your model would perform. So you resample your training set into assessment and analysis sets and kind of do like a training testing in those training sets. And here's a linear model workflow uh, and a linear model fit, and then a random model, random forest model and a fit. So they wrote a function. I don't really understand this part too much, but it essentially uh, extracts uh, our MSC and our squared from two different fits. And the main point of this whole thing is how the linear model performs with your training set and a test set. And it shows you how linear model kind of performs similar ways. Um, but random forest, because it's such a low bias model, meaning it fits the data really well on a specific data set. Uh, it, when it sees a new data set in, in the testing data, it actually uh, performs really, really, really bad. Um, and to avoid this, we would, uh, we would resample. Sorry, just a remark. So I, I saw that so linear model is is low bias, but it also depends on the number of predictors, right? So if, if you have a lot of predictors in a linear model, then it, it can it can overfit as well. And if you have few trees and few depths in a random forest, then it it can av avoid overfit better. But I guess it's just a general comparison. Yeah, no, I think you're right there. Um, so yeah, linear, uh, sorry, um, resampling methods, you take your training set um, and then divide them into a bunch of different folds, I guess, um, like you would do k-folds, and divide them into analysis, analysis and an evaluation set between whatever you want to resample. And then train a model, train a model, train a model, and then you take the uh, metrics at the end, like RMSC uh, or R squared, uh, and average them out to get your results. So yeah, fit with the analysis set, you uh, evaluate it with the evaluation set. And there are a bunch of different um, techniques, but cross-validation is probably the most widely used, I think. Um, yeah, here's a V-fold or K-fold. You divide your data into V-folds and you fit uh, V-models uh, using every data except that fold. So if you have tenfold, you take one set, uh, eliminate from your testing, or save it for your testing, and whatever nine you have left, you train your model with, and then use uh, the the one we left out, and you have ten times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and take the yeah. So this is how you do it in R uh, V fold CV. It gives you a split, so that's the assess analysis set, and that's the evaluation set, and you have ten of them. Um, so you can call them using analysis and assessment function to see those data, but uh, I think in the book they recommend you don't really have to because of the all the helper functions. Um, okay, so that was vfold, and there is repeated cross validation. So you basically do the vfold uh, r times, and this is repeats. Um, I was. When I was reading this, I was pretty confused about the difference between doing a V-fold CV of 50 folds versus doing a V-fold CV repeated five times uh, on, on those 10. And I think the difference is when you do a V-fold CV 50 times, your sample just gets so small, it doesn't really uh, mean anything. And, but if you're doing repeated 10-fold uh, ten ten CV, it just, you're working with different data sampled differently, but they're still the same size, uh, 2,000 
ish and to 200 ish. So okay. yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Um, yeah, so like I said, like the sample size doesn't really get affected because you're doing a ten, a tenfold five times and then 50 uh, gives you a table, 50 different splits that you can train your models on. Uh, leave one out cross, leave one out cross validation. It's, uh, don't use it on, unless the data is like really small, I guess. But yeah, you literally leave one out and uh, train your model based on whatever is left and then try and predict that one. Monte Carlo, uh, you give it a prop uh, percentage, I guess, uh, uh, of 90%. And you're going to use 90% training and 10% testing. But the difference is you do this every time uh, per, per fold. So the same uh, item can pop up in the evaluation set of this resample, this resample, or, or whatever. I think that's the main difference between Monte Carlo and v CV. Uh, it's kind Why, of like what is the reason to, to use this? So is there any, any, any argument in favor of? I personally don't use it, but if you have, let me know. Okay. Maybe it's because you can specify the percentage like explicitly, I don't know. But I guess you can do that CV too. Uh, yeah, so you can. Yeah. You can use a percentage which is not like uh, some equal sizes. So maybe I don't know if you, if I, I don't know why would you do that, but probably you can't do with I don't, 92%, you can't do before the CV because it, because eight is not, so 100 is not divided by eight. Yeah, I, I see that. Maybe it's because uh, it's, um, it's kind of like a bootstrap. You can see like multiple different, uh, I guess, items showing up in evaluation sets of different folds. So you can kind of mix them in. I don't know, but I think that's a difference. Uh, but yeah, Monte Carlo. And if your data is really big, you can. Uh, actually have a validation set that's uh, sending from the training set. In, and you can do that by uh, doing this validation split and gives you a valid validation set. I don't really understand this part too much. Like, isn't that the same thing as, you know, resampling? Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, if you are, if your data is big, you will still use the same validation for all your models. So it, I guess it can still happen that some information leaks into your model. Like if you train and retain and tune your programs and 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 evaluate it on the same what same one validation set, it seems seems risky to me. Or they mean that they divide this validation set further depending on the model yeah i think they're just testing it one more time right like before you actually feed the testing data you just feed it a new data that is validation set okay i think that's what it means but i can be wrong i mean my understanding is that Cross validation is is better than this uh, training validation testing approach because so one reason is that you that you average out the metrics so there's like lower variance and also there's less risk of of, of overfitting if if you tune the params a lot of times. Yeah, so it's it's not clear to me either if, if it's a recommended approach or just uh, they tell you that it's, it's also common in the, in the literature or something. Yeah, 
yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so here's bootstrapping. Uh, it's pretty much uh, sampling with replacement. So you can have uh, same item show up in the sample more than one time. And whatever has not been sampled in the training set, you use as the testing, or I should say evaluation uh, and, and analysis. Um, and yeah, that's another way to resample. Uh, what's good about this is it, uh, like same elements popping up multiple times. So it gives you like a different scenario. And apparently it has a pessimistic bias. I don't really significant pessimistic bias. Uh, not sure why, does anyone, does anyone know? I don't know. I, I was thinking about that maybe there's so if you have the same data multiple times, then when you train your model, it sees like less different data points. So it may may be able to learn less information because it sees fewer data points, but but I'm 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 not sure if it's that. Yeah, that, so that was also a point where I, <laughs> what I didn't understand. Maybe we can ask later in the Slack if, if anyone else can, can help out. Yeah, because bootstraps, like uh, what I would use it for is like uh, um, getting like a distribution of uh, st statistic, right? Like. Uh, I don't think I've ever used this in like a model fitting uh, setting. I, I think, think I think usually can, always yeah. go for it before CB. Yeah. Isn't bootstrap used in some kind of models though, also embedded within the model? So I don't know if you would bootstrap, so. bootstrap on a model that already bootstraps. Can you do it? Can people do it? Is it the bag trees that use bootstraps? I think, what does it say? It says for the random forest model mentioned earlier contain. Yeah, I think random forest model uses bootstraps. Yeah. I think it's called bagging. Um, okay. But yeah. I guess I'll use it without knowing. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty simple. Bootstraps, one function. Uh, you feed a training set and you sample it five times and you get a nice split. Okay, time series. Um, yeah, I was never good at time series, but this essentially picks the uh, initial length of a period and it just kind of rolls over as you uh, uh, go down the resample. So you can see the first one starts at one and ends at 11, and then uh, sample two starts at two, 12, and so on. But you can pack them on to resample so they don't have to be the same size. So you can cumulatively grow your resamples as you go down. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm not really good at time series, so can't really comment on this too much. Is anyone familiar with time series here? Unfortunately not. No. Um, yeah, I guess. So you need a lot of time if, if you want to do this because, because you can only do this like in continuous way. So yeah. Yeah. And Yeah, okay. I mean, if you, if you have like three years of data, you might be interested in features using data three years before, but if you want to do resampling, then maybe you only have one year and then two months and another one. So you will have a shorter time period from which you can create some uh, features. So, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I mean, it just seems that the resampling affects what kind of features you can use when training your model. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about it that way. Hmm. Yeah, I, I really miss some, some like more, more toy examples like the Ames housing data, but for, for time series, it would be really useful for me to see some, some examples like that. Okay, and then, yeah, th there are a bunch of helper functions in the tune package to work with resamples. So uh, if you wanna fit a bunch of resamples, you just do it on the workflow and give it the initial folds. Uh, and I think that was the fold CV uh, 10 times. Uh, and there's a bunch of controls you can feed in. Uh, so verbose, like you, if you wanna print something out, that kind of stuff. Uh, you, uh, I'm not sure what this was, but. I think you have to specify a function as a control. Is it a function or a list? Maybe a list of functions, I'm not sure. Uh, a list created by control resamples with various options. Okay, so it is a function you call that returns a list. Yeah, but then the control argument has the extract and the extract is a function, yeah. Yeah, okay, it, 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 it's mixed, so it, it has functions and plain arguments as well. Just gonna try, yeah, printing the class of it. Okay, I guess I won't. Um, yeah, so the output is uh, really shut my thing open. But yeah, you can use uh, collect metrics. Uh, on the on the fitted result um, to yeah it, it returns a bunch of stuff but you can use collect metrics uh, or collect preds to pull them out in a, in a table. So here the fit does the model fitting and the prediction and the metric calculation in one step. Correct, I think so. Okay. Um. And you can also feed in the metrics, right? Uh, using, or, you, know, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about? The, uh, I think it was the last chapter, but yeah, um, you, you're pretty much feeding it like what, what kind of metrics you wanna see, like RMSC, R squared, mm -hmm. or yeah. Okay, predictions. And then, yeah, I think that's all the, functions that we have to know for now. Um, there's parallel processing. Uh, I think I usually always go with do parallel register. Um, it said it had like a bunch of cores, details that I didn't really understand. Um, so yeah, I won't comment on this too much, but do you guys know much about this? Like wh why it makes sense to know? No, I guess, yeah, so parallel processing is like an independent big topic from modeling. I, I understood that if you have any samples, you can, you can do the fitting and prediction and so on, like independently from each other. 
but I don't have experience with, with setting up parallel processing remotely or something like that. But it might be interesting for, for bigger data or more complex models. So we, you mentioned you use the do parallel. So you used on your local machines, your lo local machine or, or, or on a server? Uh, I do local, but yeah. So I don't know if that speeds up too, too much. Um, but that's what I've been seeing in, in play, uh, like where people code and stuff. So I do, yeah, I do this, do parallel. Um, I think this is a function. Mm -hmm. For each. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Uh. Yeah, you can you can do pull workflow recipes on the yeah. So you can save them in like an object, I guess. Uh, the different recipes. Yeah, so they write a function uh, to access the models in when you're resampling. Uh, so that gets passed into an argument in this function, control resamples, and uh, you feed that into the fit resamples function. And when you return it, it gives you the tidied workflow fit of those resamples. Yeah. I have one question is that, so you have, for example, the root mean squared error on, on the fold. Then you always just average them out or sometimes you are interested in the maximum or minimum or variance or something like that. So I guess the, the basic workflow is, is, having, is doing the cross validation and then seeing the average, the performance metrics. But I'm not, I'm not sure when would you dig, dig deeper? Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure you can define a way, uh, like not just to average everything, but like maybe like a median or maximum, like you said. Um, but I've never done it personally. Yeah, so this... Uh control resamples is also about pulling additional information out of the out of out of the cross validation but if you like trust the process then then you don't really need these need this extra like extra information yeah i think so And uh, yeah, that's it, I think. And they, in the next chapters, I think they cover resampling, uh, using resampling to tune models and stuff. So I guess they're kind of like similar chapters, um, but yeah. So as far as chapter 10 goes, uh, I think we're just testing different models performance on an unseen data. And I guess model tuning is coming up. Yeah, so basically we have two important functions. One is generating the resamples and one is the fit resamples. And then it should just work, yeah. Yeah, collect metrics and collect preds is another good one. Yeah, also collect metrics, okay. 
Yeah, but yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it it yeah, sounds yeah. sounds simpler in your presentation than when I when I read the chapter. It was quite a lot, so I felt a bit bit overwhelmed because there's a lot of information in the result which you, you can pull out. Yeah, um, I think this is just the core of this of this chapter. You do this to fit uh, resamples and use the helper functions to pull stuff out. Yeah, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, I always plan to to start using this stuff and not just reading about it, but but I didn't find the time yet. But I guess now we have. We have in, we have enough tools to to actually actually start applying it. Do you guys know uh, what slice is? Slice competition. Uh, I heard about it, but I didn't watch it yet. I've seen it on Twitter, but I haven't yeah. seen. I haven't watched it. Did you? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They basically get two hours to like train a model in minimize some some kind of a loss function and yeah it's pretty it's pretty entertaining how people attack different problems hmm. so if you're interested in applying your skills you might uh, be interested in joining the live do you, do you see that do you see them using like this fit resampling and like techniques from the book and stuff oh yeah julia silky was on it oh cool yeah it's probably probably i should check it out yeah it, it sounds great yeah, I think there is one tomorrow, tomorrow night. Uh, I forget what time. So uh, yeah, Tuesday, 9 p.m. 